This is Steve Parker of Elite Therapy Solutions of Richardson, Texas. I'd like to now go over something about the head injuries situation. Um, I would like to give a little the spiel I give my parents on the field to give you an idea of what you need to look for and how to get your child back successfully from a brain injury. And this is for information only, but I would, the first thing I want to say is at any time during your child's brain injury, that you do not feel comfortable with how that child is doing, get to a hospital or the closest physician and let them check them out because you have to feel comfortable with how your kid's progressing. We, we don't call it a concussion anymore, we call it a mild traumatic brain injury. And the definition of it is your child gets some kind of brain injury during the game where there's, the brains rattle back and forth, uh, whiplash, elbow, head to head something and he didn't have any symptoms before and he has the injury and now they have symptoms. No matter how mild or mitered the symptoms are or how severe, we call it a uh, brain injury. The first 24 to 48 hours are critical. I tell the parents, I draw a graph. If the, if the, parent, if the uh, kid gets better and better as, you, as you're watching them, then you just watch them. At any point in time, they start going the other direction hospital, CAT scan, take care of them. I hate to say it, but in 45 years, I've never had a CAT scan come back positive, but I always tell parents their kid may be my first. Seven days, the blood chemistry changes. Seven days, potassium leaks out of the cell, calcium leaks into the cell, which makes the brain need more energy. The problem is, for seven to 10 days of blood flow, the, br the brain decreases which makes matters worse because it needs more energy, the blood flow decreases, so they'll start getting tired and lethargic. This is another sign, this is another sign of a brain injury. Uh, stimulation slows down the healing process. If you stimulate the brain, whether even sitting on the field with the wind, the coach is yelling, the kids yelling, the sun can set the symptoms off, uh, anything that stimulates the brain. We're talking uh, things that the kids shouldn't do right away for, until the doctor says it's all right to do it, things like texting, uh, video games, computer, homework, reading, anything that might stimulate the brain, even going to school. And this can be a problem because when they go to school, uh, the teachers, the principal, and the nurse at the school need to know that this kid has had a brain injury and they need, to, they need to make accommodations for them, whether it's testing or homework, or just the fact that if they start getting headaches in the middle of the day or the first of the day, whenever, they, they need to go home. Uh, just remember the stimulation slows down the brain. And in school, you'll, you'll find that, that math, science, and sometimes English, if they're doing a lot of reading, will, will set off symptoms. Just walking in the hallway before school can set off symptoms, because all the energy in that hallway, if you've ever gone into a school, and felt that, that buzz of energy in the hallways before school. So I tell kids, sometimes they need to maybe go in five minutes late to school to, to keep away from that, and then change classes five minutes early or five minutes late so they don't get that, that energy in the hallway. They, they'll set off symptoms in their brain. Uh, no physical activity for seven days. No physical activity unless the doctor tells, them diff tells you different. For gosh sake, see an impact doctor. The impact test is a gold standard for concussion management in today's world. And there's doctors out there, there are family doctors, or pediatricians, neurologists that are, that are schooled in the impact test. And it's an online test, takes about 40 minutes. It tests the seven areas of function of the brain that you can't see by just looking at their eyes or seeing their balance or say, ask them if they have headaches. Um, Every pro team uses it, every college uses it, and most high schools use it. Okay, drugs. What kind of drugs can you give your kids? I don't like giving them anything that will take the pain away initially. Now, if you get to, in, I always to ask them zero to 10, how bad is a headache? How bad are your symptoms? If the symptoms are getting better and better, you just watch them. If you're not comfortable how they're doing, once again, hospital. But as far as drugs, I don't want to give them anything until bedtime. Then if the headaches are one or two and they're feeling all right, but they're having a little bit of trouble getting to sleep, then I give them, you can give them Tylenol and Aleve because there's no bleeding component to those two drugs. 
sleeping during the day, if you say your kid has a brain injury in the morning at a um, soccer tournament or league play, I don't mind them sleeping throughout the day. We used to keep them awake all day long, but we realized that the brains that started the healing process. So yeah, I don't mind letting them sleep for an hour at a time and then wake them up for an hour, hour at a time. As far as TV, I used to say a Little House on the Prairie reruns. It's very benign TV, but now it's SpongeBob SquarePants. So anything that does not stimulate the brain, anything flashy, in fact, the, probably the worst thing on TV is the commercials. So if you can video something, I mean, uh, record something and then arrow through the commercials, they're usually flashy trying to get your attention. And if you have a big screen, make them sit back from the screen as far as possible so that it doesn't, it's a, as little stimulation as possible and their brain will tell you if they have too much stimulation because they'll start having the headaches. Uh, the first night, I know you don't have to do this from the studies, from the latest studies, but I'm from the old school where we woke up the, woke up the kid every two hours, check the pupils, make sure they're awake and let them go back to sleep. That was the old school. I would just suggest maybe one time at night in the middle of their sleep pattern, around two or three in the morning, wake them up, take a flashlight, shine it in each eye, make sure the pupils get small equally and they do react. Talk to them, make sure they're awake, and then let them go back to sleep. After seven days and they get a good impact test and they have no symptoms, then they can start what's called the progression program. This is five days of raising the blood pressure and pulse rate over five days using some drills that they use in sports. And that way you can tell if they are able to go back on the field or not. After five days, they've passed those tests. Then you put them back on the field. And I like to go for a week of no scrimmaging or no heading the ball. And by doing this, you know for sure they're ready to go back to play. Um, follow, if you follow the protocol, there's a good chance they'll come out whole at the end. I'm not saying this is 100%, it's surely not guaranteed because I've seen first head injuries take somebody out of the soccer or whatever sport they have the rest of their lives. But if you follow these and give your kid the best chance to come back and be a whole person. Thank you.